Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an octic equation. We have x to the eighth power equals the quantity 2x minus 1 to the fourth power. And we're going to be solving for x values. I'm also going to show you a graph at the end. So if you go ahead and expand this, x to the eighth equals this, you're going to get something like this. Now, isn't this a nice octic? Well, all octics are nice, but some octics are nicer than others. Anyway, so as you can see, we don't have a formula to solve it, and it doesn't look like it's going to be factorable easily. Maybe it is. So here's what we're going to be looking at. If a squared equals b squared, then we have two results, right? a is equal to b or a is equal to negative b. But why does this work? Have you ever thought about it? Well, you may say absolute value, square root, so on and so forth, but we can also look at it differently. So if a squared equals b squared, we can write it as a squared minus b squared equals zero. Then a squared minus b squared is factorable because it's difference of two squares, and from here we get the results. Make sense? Now, this is something we're gonna use. So we had x to the eighth equals two x minus one all to the fourth. Now let's go ahead and turn this into a difference of two squares by subtraction, x to the eighth minus two x minus one to the fourth equals zero. Now, this may not look like difference of two squares to you, but if you think about it, this is x to the fourth squared, and this is two x minus one squared squared. Make sense? Okay, because two times two is four, and four times two is eight. So now it's a difference of two squared, and we can factor it as such, x to the fourth plus 2x minus 1 squared multiplied by x to the fourth minus 2x minus 1 squared and set it equal to zero. Now obviously this is easier to solve because from an octic we go to a product of two quartics. Okay? Now first of all, if you look at the first equation and set it equal to zero, this expression is not actually going to be zero for real x. Right? So what are we going to do? We'll talk about it in a little bit. But let's go ahead and focus on the other equation because that one is a little easier to solve. So this is a difference of two squares and we can factor it one more time. You see, we can write it as x squared and 2x minus 1 squared. So it's going to be x squared plus 2x minus 1 and x squared minus 2x minus 1. If you subtract 2x minus 1, you're going to have to negate it, right? Now, this becomes a product of two quadratics, which we can solve, but let's go ahead and remove the parentheses. And notice that the second expression can actually be written as x minus 1 quantity squared, which is nice. From there, we're going to get a single solution. And from this one, by using the quadratic formula, we can get negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 4 plus 4, that's 8. So we're going to get the square root of 8, but can I write it as 2 root 2? Eventually you're going to get that, right? And that divided by 2, because 2a. But now this becomes negative 1 plus minus root 2. So that's going to be two solutions to the octic, octic, quadratic, quartic, whatever. And these, or this, is just going to give me x equals 1. That's a single solution right? That can happen if you have a perfect square, or double root, you can also call that. Now, those are the real solutions, but are those the only real solutions? Yes, the answer is yes, but how do we find complex solutions, solutions that are not real in this case, right? Because complex numbers can be real too, right? Can't they? Okay, obviously <laughs> some of them. So, to be able to solve this problem, let's go ahead and consider the following. x to the fourth plus, so in other words, this is not a difference of two squares, it's a sum of two squares. And if you think about complex numbers, especially if you've seen some videos on my other channel, which is a plus bi, if you check that channel, then you hopefully saw that when we multiply two conjugates, then we get a sum of two squares. So that should give you an idea about how to factor sum of two squares. Make sense? But I'm going to show you an alternative method here. So x to the fourth plus 2x minus 1 squared can actually be um, factored as follows or just solved as follows. 
I'm going to put the 2x minus 1 squared with a minus sign on the right hand side and then I'll square root both sides. When I square root a negative 1, it's going to give me i because remember the square root of negative 1 is i. But wait a minute, uh, negative 1 has two square roots, doesn't it? Well, it could be i or negative i. So we can kind of put a plus minus sign and that'll take care of it. Makes sense? So when we square root both sides, we get x squared equals plus minus 2x minus 1 multiplied by i. Now, if you if this doesn't make sense to you, think about an easier example like x to the fourth equals 4i. So when you take the square root, actually, that's not right. I meant to write negative 4, okay? And then in this case, we can kind of, when we take the square roots, this is going to become x squared, and this is going to become 2i. Because if you square 2i, it's going to be negative 4, right? 4i squared. But i squared is negative 1. But, again, this is going to be plus minus. There are two numbers whose square equals negative 4 in the real world, right? Or in the complex world, whatever. Something like that. So we got these values. What can we do with them? We can square root again, but that's going to take us to the square root of i, which we'll have to deal with anyways. That's one way to do it. Another way to approach this problem is by turning this into a quadratic equation, right? It's quadratic. So go ahead and start with the plus sign. So start with this. And then just distribute x squared equals 2xi minus i. And then put everything on the left. Or maybe you can, or you can just leave it like this. Because what I'm about to do is actually really cool, by the way. Let me make some room here so I can kind of demonstrate. So what I'm about to do is actually really cool because I'm going to complete the square. So what do I need on the left-hand side to turn this expression into a perfect square? It's x squared minus 2ix. If you're wondering what that is, look at the coefficient of x, and plus minus doesn't matter that much. It's 2i, or the absolute value, or just the positive version. Half of 2i is i, so you, do, you need to add i squared. Makes sense? So i squared is negative 1, but don't worry about it. We'll take care of it later. And now this becomes x minus i squared. That's what matters, right? Equals, this is negative 1, so it's going to be negative 1 minus i. Awesome. This is nice because we can square root both sides, and then we can get to x. Or you can use the quadratic formula, pretty much the same thing. You know, it'll take you to the answer. Now, if you square root both sides, we have to deal with the square root of negative 1 minus i. So let's go ahead and write this in polar form. This will actually be the square root of now, if you think about it, its modulus is square root of 2, and the angle, the argument is going to be because it's in the third quadrant. Think about pi over 4 and just extend it. Add pi to it, which is 5 pi over 4. It's going to be i like i times 5 pi over 4. So what I need to do is square root to square root of 2, which is going to give us the fourth root of 2, double square root. And then this angle will be cut in half, so it's going to be i times 5 pi over 8. But you got to remember there are two square roots, and the square roots of a complex number are opposites. So you can actually put a plus minus sign here if you want, because you can stick with the same angle that way. Or you can just think about the what the other angle is going to be you know, uh, for the square root, right? Anyways, and that's going to be in the first quadrant, yes. Because this is both negative, the other one is going to be both positive. Make sense? Now, if you add i to both sides, you're going to get something like i plus minus the fourth root of 2 multiplied by e to the power i 5 pi over 8. And if you're wondering what uh, the values for 5 pi over 8 is going to look like, you can actually look at pi over 8 and then kind of convert to find like cosine pi over 8 and sine pi over 8. You can use the double angle formulas or you can go ahead and draw a right triangle for pi over 4, like 1, 1, root 2, and then extend it as much as root 2, connect it, and then from uh, exterior angle theorem and an isosceles triangle, you're going to get pi over 8, and all the values are going to become uh, available. Okay, makes sense? But I think this should be good enough. Let's go ahead and take a look at something, and then we'll finish up. All right, what are we going to look at? 
the graph of these two functions. Yay! Awesome, right? They intersect at three points. Uh, thanks to Wolfram Alpha, by the way. I mean, this video is not sponsored by the man. I just wanted to mention it because the graph is pretty compact, um, unlike Desmos. And these are the real solutions. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.